Hello friends and welcome back yet again for another Art with Miss Tuna. So I am here super excited. We're actually going to do a two-part drawing today. I'm going to use the special letter F and for some of my friends that are at my school that's going to be Firefighter Fred. So we are going to draw the letter F and turn it into a flower. And then on top of that, somewhere hopefully around here, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a cute little bumblebee. Uh, spring is here, we're getting really excited. I see some flowers blooming outside. So I figured what great opportunity would it be to learn how to use a letter and turn it into a flower? Amazing. Um, so I have my bumblebee ready. I have my, my uh, flower ready to show you guys. I'm super excited. Again, using my special Sharpie so that it's nice and dark for you guys to see up here on the video. Um, but also to my right, I have some really special color pencils today. Uh, these were something I found uh, traveling up to um, a special art teacher conference and I wanted to use them to show you how cool they are. And I know a lot of my friends might have some color pencils at home that they can follow me with. But as per usual, I want you guys to remember whatever you have at home is what I want you to use today. I don't want you to feel stressed that you don't have the right materials. You can make art out of anything. So here we go, let's get started. I'm super excited. So we're gonna start down here um, for our flower so that way it can leave some room up here for our bumblebee. So what we're going to start off with is drawing a lowercase f, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, make that f just like that. Easy cheesy, okay? I'll give you some time to do that now. Now you're probably wondering, Miss Antuna, I don't really know how to turn an F like this into a flower. Well, have no fear, that is why I'm here. So we're going to do a flower that looks like it's kind of wilting. It means that it's kind of pointing downwards instead of upwards. And some of our flowers outside right now are doing just that. They're slowly going down because it's super cold out, right? And they can't wear any clothes like a coat or gloves or a scarf to make them warm up. So when the sun comes out, their flower points back up towards the sun and that's how they get nice and warm. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is how to use the letter F to make a downward pointing flower. So the first thing we're gonna start off is this part, this straight line in our lowercase f. We're actually going to turn those into some leaves and watch how magical it really is. We're gonna do two curved lines to connect to a point to create a leaf. Now, some of my students know how to do that. For those of you at home that don't, take a look. We're gonna start right here where it kind of crisscrosses and makes an X almost. We are going to start right there in the middle, curve to a point, okay? So far, so good. What you're gonna do is you're gonna mirror that. You're gonna show that same line, but going the opposite way underneath. So we'll go here curve around and add to the point. Not too shabby, right? So I'll give you a couple seconds to try your first leaf. And then I'll show you how to do the second leaf on the right, just the same. Great job, my friends, super proud of you. So here we go. I know sometimes that can get tricky, but it is okay. So we're gonna do the same curved line starting right in the middle like I had told you, to a point, and then we're gonna take this bottom one, do the same thing, to a point. And we have two really cute leaves. Um, if you know how to make other special flower leaves, by all means, be an artist, be creative, be adventurous. So what I wanna do is kind of do the little uh, veins inside the leaves that some of us get to see. And I usually like to do one, two, one, two, one, two. Easy cheesy. It's just two lines on top, two lines on the bottom. Two lines on top, two lines on the bottom. You guys can try that now. I 
All right, now we're gonna get to the flower part. Now that's where it gets a little bit trickier, but I totally believe in you guys and I think it's gonna be just fine. So what we're going to do is we're gonna focus right down here. When you do that curve for your F right on top, where it start, where it stops, I'm sorry, is where we're going to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start by making a black circle right at the bottom where my F curve stops. So we'll follow that F from the bottom to the top, and we're gonna start that little line right there. Now you're probably wondering, hmm, what should I do next? Great question. We're gonna start working on those petals. That is going to be the center of our flower. We're going to make some petals all the way around it to look like a flower now. So I'm gonna start at the top. You see where this line is? I'm gonna use that line to help me make some petals. And all that is, is a line that we curve around and come back to our petal. Curve around, come back to the center, curve around, back to the center, until, ta-da! You have enough petals to make it from the top all the way back again. Just like we see our clocks, they start by going to the, the minute hand and the hour hand, go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 o'clock. So you wanna go all the way around to fill up every petal that is attached to the center of your flower. Now that's a tricky part, so take your time, I'll be here. Now, we're gonna start with some grass. Before we go and jump up to our beautiful bumblebee, we're gonna make some grass at the bottom so that our flower has somewhere to live. So we're gonna start here, and all I'm gonna do is use a zigzag line, up and down, back and forth, from one side of my paper all the way to the other. Again, that's just zigzag lines. I'm going up and down, up and down. For my friends at school, zigzag zebra is the letter you should be keeping in mind. Take a look, try your best. You're gonna start your grass on this side, at the left, and go all the way across to the right. If you're having trouble catching up, remember you could always pause and remind me that way you can catch up on anything you might have missed that I was saying. Okay, perfect. So we are going to get started now with our silly little bumblebees. Now what we're going to use is not necessarily gonna be another letter to make our bumblebee, but we're actually gonna use the shape of an oval. So what I'm gonna do, if my flower's down here, my bumblebee likes to fly in the sky. So I'm gonna do my oval maybe around here. Now that's not too big. If you take a look at your flower, my bumblebee is just a little bit bigger than the flower itself. Nice little oval. I did mine on a diagonal, but if you do yours up and down, side to side, whatever you gotta do, totally fine. I did mine just like here, um, just because it kind of looks like the bumblebee's looking at the flower, like she or he is interested in that beautiful flower that probably has nectar for them to make honey. So I have my uh, oval here that is on its side. And the first thing I wanna do is give it a couple little baby bumblebee wings. Now this is where you might recognize another letter that's gonna help us with the wings. And that's gonna be a capital B for Bouncy Ben. We're gonna do capital B. We're gonna start that side of the oval is gonna be our one line for our bouncy bend, right? Right around here. Then we're gonna do one loop and a bigger loop to create the letter B. It's a capital B. Now, the next one on the left is gonna be a little tricky because we have to make that B backwards. So you're gonna go loop it this way and the bigger one underneath. 
just like that. Try it out, take your time. Then after that, I wanna give it some antennas. I always like my little bugs to have some cute antennas. And all that is is a little curved line here, a little curved line here, and a black circle on top. Now, before we work on all those bumblebee stripes, everyone knows that bumblebees are usually yellow and black, and that's how their stripes are on their body. So before we do that, I wanna make sure we can fit a cute little face that's going to consist of two eyes and one big smile. So all you gotta do is make two little circles and one big smiley face. Boy, I do love my bumblebees happy. Now the last few steps is we are just going to make some stripes for our bumblebee. How cute, how easy, and last, just a little stinger, okay? That helps our bumblebees protect themselves, right? Now the next type of line that we're going to use is going to be a dotted line or a dashed line. And just to give you an example, I have a little scrap paper underneath, a dotted line or a dashed line almost looks like that line in the middle of the road, right? Usually yellow, sometimes white, and it gives you little lines close together, but kind of making it look like they're separate and together all at once. So we're gonna use something like that. If you don't wanna use a, um, if you don't wanna use a dashed line like this, you can also use a dotted line where you do almost like mini polka dots, but they're all going in one same direction. So what you're gonna do is I want it to look like my bumblebee is flying around. Now, if this part's too tricky, don't worry. It looks like my bumblebee went from here, did a little twist and back up in the air, right? Easy cheesy. But if this is too hard for you, you don't have to do it. This is just a little extra for my friends that wanna be extra adventurous today. Now we just have one last thing to make, and we're gonna use a cloud line to actually make some clouds today. Go figure. So we're going to make those cloud lines which kind of look like this. Let's go back to my handy dandy scrap paper. And our scrap or our cloud lines look something like this. Another word that we use for those other than cloud lines is called a scalloped line. A scalloped line. And that just means that if we put this together, this line, if we make it go in a circle, it'll turn into a little cloud. So I'm thinking two clouds might be perfect for my picture, but again, you are the artist. Make however many you want. I'm gonna go with two today. And just like that, we made our first scene. That means something is happening here. It's not just like our monster from last time where our monster just had a cute background around it or our Pikachu who had a little um, thought bubble, right? There was nothing going on. It was just kind of like Pikachu and my monster were just saying hi, right? But here, something's going on. You can imagine. There's clouds, there's a little bumblebee, there's a flower, the bumblebee just visited the flower. It's probably a beautiful spring day. And you can imagine or tell a story about that. So that is why this is called a scene. So I'm gonna color this up. Remember, use whatever you have at home. If you don't have anything at home, please don't worry. Now is the time where you can be all done simply by drawing. But if you want to stay put, I'm going to give you my version of how to color this. And again, surprise yourself. Use whatever colors are really, really popping out at you today. Uh, let's get started so you can see this beautiful masterpiece. <laughs> 